Welcome everyone to the March 2024 TDL Member Forum. My name is Christy Park. I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. <clears throat> Next slide, please. As we gather in this shared virtual space, TDL would like to acknowledge the American Indian and Indigenous peoples and communities who have been or have become part of the lands and territories in Texas. They are listed on this slide, all located on the Indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what now is called North America. I'm joining from Austin, where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. And I invite you to share in your share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you would like to. <clears throat> we'll follow our usual agenda, and um, I'll be joined in presenting information today by our Deputy Director Courtney Muma and Outreach Coordinator Kiara Hunt. Um, we're also joined by uh, several members of our staff who are in attendance today and uh, Ima Adwak, our uh, resident librarian, is going to be is sharing the slides today. So thank you, Ima. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move forward into the director's updates. So we'll start with a bit of news from the TDL board. As many of you know, our chair for the 2023-24 academic year has been Athena Jackson, the former Dean of Libraries at the University of Houston. But as of March 1st, Athena is the new university librarian at UCLA. So just wanted to express our gratitude for Athena's leadership on our board and in helping form and guide, um, among other things, our ACRL diversity residency program at TDL and wish her the very best in her new role. As vice chair for the current academic year, Julie Mosbo Balestro has assumed the chair of the TDL boards as of March 1st. Julie is the university li librarian and assistant provost at Texas A&M Libraries. And we are really grateful for her willingness to take the chair about six months earlier than uh, she expected to. We're looking forward to working with Julie in that role. I'll also note that uh, Christina Gola, who was named interim dean of the U of H libraries upon Athena's departure, will assume uh, U of H's ex officio seat on TDL's governing board. So we're excited to welcome Christina. Our governing board will hold its spring meeting on April 5th online, where among other things, we'll be updating the board on various initiatives and also uh, approving our budget for next fiscal year, which will begin September 1st. So we'll keep you updated um, uh, on, you know, things that transpire at that meeting uh, as we're able. Okay, I'm having a hard time believing it's already mid-March, but it is. And it's that time of year when I start getting really excited about uh, TCDL. It's coming in less than two months or about two months, I guess. Um, and many of us will have the opportunity to gather in person in Austin and uh, learn from each other and hear from some amazing invited speakers and get to celebrate our TDL awards recipients and, and all the work of our members and of TDL over the last year. So our TCDL planning committees have really been doing just a tremendous job planning and preparing for this event. As you know, we'll be hearing from Dr. Patricia Sway from the Mellon Foundation in our opening plenary, really excited about that. And we've got some other plans in the works for some special presentations uh, in addition to that one. So more to come. Um, right now, our committee members are in the process of reviewing presentation proposals and will be sending out decision notifications the week of April 1st. Uh, we're also working on some really fun networking and swag experiences for the conference, picking out prizes for our scavenger hunt winners and notifying TDL awards recipients. We're also gonna have a wonderful group of student scholarship recipients who will get free registration thanks to a generous anonymous donor. So there's a lot going on in preparation for TCDL and I wanna thank our planning committees 
led by Chair Diane Lopez from UT San Antonio and Vice Chair Heidi Winkler from Texas Tech. Also Kira Hunt and Megan Hernandez on our staff and all the subcommittee chairs who really are doing a fantastic job leading this process this year. It's a lot of work and hopefully a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun working with them. Kira is gonna share some details later in the forum today about how to get registered, uh, but I'll just encourage you now to consider attending if you're able, it's gonna be a great time. Okay. So next we'll move into our services and projects updates, starting with digital repository hosting. First off, uh, Nick Woodward, our uh, DSpace Tech Lead, Senior Software Engineer, has been conducting a minor upgrade of our 24 hosted repositories to DSpace 7.6.1. Those are on schedule to wrap up this week. Um, this is a bug fix release. It's uh, not very disruptive. There's a couple of minutes of downtime. We've been contacting each repository manager on the day that we're, we're doing these upgrades. We'll post a link in chat to the schedule of upgrades, but we are already substantially done with these. And as I said, should be wrapping up uh, on them later this week. Secondly, I'm very pleased to let you know that TDL and its DSpace hosting service will be represented in June at the 19th International Conference on Open Repositories. Nick Woodward and I will be presenting um, uh, on TDL's DSpace 7 upgrade journey, a presentation entitled There's No Cow on the Ice, How We Learn to Stop Worrying and Love DSpace 7. Um, Colleen Lyon will also be presenting a poster there on DSpace 7 as an outreach opportunity. As many of you know, Open Repositories occupies a unique place in the landscape of open knowledge, open source, and digital preservation conferences with a focus on the vital role that open repositories play in preserving and creating access to scholarly outputs. So we're really excited to be attending and representing TDL there. Um, and if you're gonna be there, please let us know. Um, we wanna connect with you while we're there. Next up, I wanted to amplify an opportunity that um, is coming from the global DSpace community for helping to improve UX design in DSpace in future software releases. The DSpace Community Advisory Team has sponsored a UX project team to perform targeted user testing on version seven of the software with an anticipated start date for this project of summer uh, or fall 2024. The goal of this testing will be to suggest user improvements to, to future versions, so starting with DSpace 8. In advance of this, um, they're planning to use a few established IRs for developing tests those repository examples will help the project team develop tests that are widely adaptable and represent real world instances of current DSpace. So if your IR fits with uh, in the parameters they're asking for, and I will say all of your TDL hosted repositories fit within these parameters, and you wanna submit it as an example, you can contact um, the project leads. We're gonna put their contact information in chat. It's Colin Lukens at Harvard University and Erica Johns at Cornell. They're leading this um, effort. Um, the outcomes of the user testing will be shared within the global DSpace community and uh, so that they can be considered for future development. Um, and I hope that we'll have some TDL hosted repositories represented in that testing group. Finally, some reminders about opportunities to connect with other users of DSpace at the regional and national levels. Our next TDL DSpace user group meeting is next week, March 26th. Uh, we're also planning an in-person meeting at TCDL. So if you're planning to attend the conference, we hope you'll uh, stick around and attend the, the in-person DSpace user group meeting. 
And just a, a reminder, I'm going to keep reminding folks about a North American DSpace user group meeting that's going to take place in September at the University of Minnesota. Um, we have a couple of TDL folks um, on the planning committee for this meeting. Um, and that's going to be a really, really rich opportunity to connect with other users in uh, the North American region around DSpace use. It'll be September 23rd through 25th of this year in Minneapolis. And there will be more. I think they're working on getting a call for proposals out for that meeting um, soon. But we'll put a link in chat to a page in the DSpace wiki uh, where more information will be shared. And we'll be sharing out that information through our channels as it becomes available. All right, next up is our open access journal hosting service. Nick Woodward um, will begin upgrading our 80 plus hosted journal sites to a new version of OJS um, starting around April 1st. So that's coming soon once we get the DSpace upgrades done. We're gonna be um, moving from version 3.3 to 3.4. So this isn't a major new release, but there are some new features and performance improvements in 3.4. And we'll share a link in chat to some information about what's, what's new in this latest version so you can get to know it. Our next OJS users group meeting will be April 4th at 10 and the group is continuing to work on a collective assessment project where we're looking at copyright and licensing policies and preservation and archiving policies across all TDL hosted journals. We need, we really need all of our institutions using this service um, represented in this project. So if you are the service rep for OJS at your institution, I encourage you to attend this upcoming meeting and, and get involved with what I think is going to be a, a really useful and rewarding assessment. All right. Finally, for me, before I hand it over to Courtney, a couple of updates on our OER support services. So we've got our quarterly OER at TDL public meeting coming up next week on March 27th, where we'll be hosting a discussion on the topic of support for the solo librarian. We've got a great group of panelists for this discussion, and we'll, we'll put a link in chat where you can register for that event. Additionally, our OER users group is planning a couple of meetups at TCDL in May. One will be a business meeting and one will be not a business meeting, more of a social gathering. Um, so stay tuned for those details um, as we plan them and, and hope you'll join us. That's a great group. And lastly, one more reminder from the uh, from me about OEN discounted membership. <clears throat> Um, as a member of TDL, your institution is eligible to join the Open Education Network as a direct institutional member at a deeply reduced membership rate of $608 annually. That's a third of the standard annual membership cost. And it gets you and your institution your own direct access to many OEN benefits, as well as steeper discounts on some professional development opportunities. We have a, a number of institutions in the membership who are already um, taking advantage of this benefit. And if you haven't yet joined, but you're interested, now's the time of year to let OEN know. Um, we'll put a link in chat to a form, a Google form where you can contact OEN and let them know you're interested and they'll follow up with you directly. You need to do that by May 1st um, in order to uh, join for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay, I think that's it for me. Now I'll hand it over to Courtney to talk about Vireo. Thanks, Christy. Howdy, everybody. Um, so let's start with Vireo. Our lead developer, Frank Smutniak, who's here at the forum today, has completed our largest migration and upgrade to Vireo 4, and that's UT Austin, who is now in production on the new system. So that leaves only three remaining members to move into Vireo 4. Um, Frank will also reach out soon to those of you who are already on 4, 
to upgrade you all to the most current version of the software. It's just a minor upgrade and that'll all be over the course of the next month. So look for those emails from Frank or I. <clears throat> um, let's move on to the Texas Data Repository. So TDL Systems Administrator Nick Lawland has upgraded our Texas Data Repository to version 6.1 of Dataverse. Um, the last biannual upgrade that we did was to 5.13. So there have been several intermittent releases. And to see details from each release in the interim, please see the link that we provide here in chat. Also, the TDR Steering Committee's data retention subgroup is sharing their work at open repositories as well. Their presentation is titled, Creating Transparent Retention Policies for Data Repositories to Ensure Long-Term Sustainability for the Research Community. So congratulations to them on their invitation to share with the OR community. Next up, um, in Digital Preservation Services, we've done upgrades to our DuraCloud at TDL. They are all complete thanks to Nick Woodward for his development contributions and also for the smooth upgrade process. Um, if you haven't already updated your sync tool locally as we requested during the upgrade, please do send us a help desk ticket as soon as possible so that we can help out. And I've got a little more about digital preservation. Um, please join us for the upcoming Digital Preservation Decision Trees Guidance at Workflow Inflection Points webinar on Thursday, April 11th at 2 p.m. Central Time. Dr. Nancy McGovern of Global Archivist LLC and a leading digital preservation instructor and expert for several decades will share a set of guidance documents she created for the Texas Digital Library Consortium and digital preservationists. This webinar will help TDL members understand the steps that they should take to preserve a few common sets of content types with alternative workflows at crucial decision points along the way. At the end of the webinar, attendees will have a set of resources that they can bookmark and return to to help them create packages ready to put into digital preservation storage. Registration is open to anyone with an interest in digital preservation workflows, and it is free to attend. And we're going to add all the details and the registration link in the chat. Finally, updates on DPLA. Um, I attended the DPLA Network Advisors quarterly meeting last week where I got updates from the DPLA staff board and other hubs. During that meeting, they updated us about some recordings available from recent events, which may be of interest to some of you. Recordings are available for the Introduction to Open Refine webinar and their South by Southwest EDU panel, Safeguarding Our Histories, Libraries, and Inclusive Stories. I also wanna highlight an upcoming reparative description workshop series hosted by the DPLA's Metadata Working Group. Their Practical Approaches for Reparative Description, a workshop series designed for people working with cultural heritage data, looking to deepen their understanding and practice of reparative description. Along with those links, we'll add a link for upcoming DPLA event descriptions and registration links to the chat. Next, we'll move into our community updates with our outreach coordinator, Kiara Hunt. Hello, everyone. So more on TCDO, um, just an update for you all that it's time to register right now. So we have our member rate at um, the early bird period, which will be ending on May 3rd. So make sure you get your registration um, all ready to go so you can attend the conference and we'll see you in Austin. Next, more on the OER at TDL um, webinar on March 27th. This meeting will include a discussion panel on the challenges of sustaining open education initiatives in a solo role. And we are we can develop strategies for creating resilient OER programs by leveraging the support of our community. The meeting will include a discussion panel, and we have all of the panelists listed right here on the slide, um, who will discuss all of the um, challenges of sustaining open education niche initiatives in a solo role. Um, this will be a candid conversation and will not be recorded and presentations and resources shared during the meeting will be shared with registrants afterwards. Registration is required and we'll have more details down below in the chat. Next slide, please. 
It's time to save the date for Open Texas 2024, which is happening September 25th to 27th. The conference will once again be fully online and free to attend. The conference theme will be Global Horizons of Open Education, The View from Texas. Stay tuned for more information about the conference proposals and more details about the event. The 2024 Open Texas Conference is jointly organized by Texas Digital Library and the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to convene faculty, librarians, administrators, and other open education practitioners, researchers, and advocates in Texas. And we'll share the details in the chat for you all to know more about what's happening. Next slide, please. So here are the upcoming meetings and events happening at TDL. These meetings and events are free and open to anyone you're, and you're always welcome to invite your campus partners and non-TDL member colleagues and your network to join us. Um, we have on Friday, March 22nd at 2 p.m. the GIS interest group meeting. And then on Tuesday, March 26th at 10 a.m., we have the DSpace user group meeting. And then of course, on Wednesday, March 27th, once again, we have the OER at TDL support for the solo librarian webinar. We'll include all the upcoming um, events link down in the chat and we'll also have our April 2024 what's happening also available in the chat. Next, oh, there we go. So just an update for all of our TDL membership um, groups and just the gov governing and governance information. I do want to have a check-in, go out to everyone that um, has a governance year end and you'll be receiving this email about a month before that year end date. So for example, if you have a May governance year end date, you'll receive an email from me around early April. And this email will have details about um, guidelines and membership policy. And just a reminder that we want to know what your current status will be moving into the new governance year. So please keep an eye on your inboxes. Next slide, please. So of course, as always, um, we want you all to connect with us on social media and also sign up for our email um, emailing groups and um, to visit our website at tdl.org so you can connect with us and keep up with all of our all of the information about events and announcements that we have coming up soon. And we'll include all of those links to connect with us in the chat. And I think that's it for me for all of our community updates. So I will hand it back over to Christy for any questions that you all may have. Thanks everyone. Thanks Kira and thanks Courtney for all those excellent updates. We've got a lot going on and we do have a little bit of time for questions if you have any. Um, also wanna remind you that if you would like to submit a question anonymously, you can do that through our suggestion box, which is a Google form that we've shared in chat. And that link is on the slide here as well. Um, I will while you're thinking of any questions, I do want to just um, clarify one thing about the OER at TDL meeting on March 27th. I think the slide may have said 1.30 p.m. as the start time, but it is actually 1 p.m. So I just want to make sure we um, clarify that it will start at 1 p.m. And if you've registered and you have a, a Outlook invitation that says 1 p.m. That's correct. Um, so do we have any questions or announcements or comments anybody wants to share? Okie doke, I'm not seeing any typing in chat or hearing anything, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up for this month. Thanks for joining us today at the forum. Um, we're glad you're here, we're glad you're part of the TDL community, and we look forward to seeing you again at next month's forum if we don't see you at an event in the meantime. So everybody take care, we'll see you soon.